Todd, who is Mo Norman? A lot of people, like avid golfers, know who Mo Norman is, but a lot of people don't. Who is Mo? Well, to me, you know, I met Mo Norman back in 1994. He, uh, and he was this mysterious guy that I had heard a lot about uh, from other players, good players that tell me there's this guy in Canada that's um, this incredible ball striker. And we always re referenced how great a ball striker he was. And then once people tell you how great a ball striker he was, they tell you how odd of a character he was. So you kind of hear both sides of the story about Mo. That's who he was when I first heard about him. Um, and a friend of mine, who we talk about in the book, Matthew Lane, brought a video of Mo to me and said, you got to see this guy hit a golf ball. So my first experience with Mo was actually seeing his golf swing on a video. And his golf swing caught my attention because it was, and I'll say this, it was what I had been trying to learn to do, but in a much easier way. That's the first thing I noticed when I saw a video of Mo. That's the Mo Norman I knew when I first met him. Well, before I met him, and then I met him. And then I went through my experience of finding Mo at a clinic and meeting him at the clinic and then becoming friends with him and then becoming more of his protege and fo basically following him around so I could learn what he knew about the golf swing. And once I became friends with him, he became a different guy to me because he was, I, I, thought, I thought he's a highly intelligent guy. He's very introverted, very, very reclusive. People called him autistic. I'm not sure if he is or if he isn't. I'm not sure anybody knows if he is or if he isn't or was, but I definitely think that he had traits of, of that type of behavior. But I found him highly, highly intelligent. And when it came to his golf game, which is what he wanted to spend most of his time talking to me about, um, I found it the way he taught me and the way he tried to communicate was Mo Norman. I mean, that's what I learned about Mo. Um, your experience, I think, started in a similar way. Yeah, um, I grew up in southern Ontario. Mo grew up in in, uh, in Kitchener, Ontario, and he was always this mysterious guy. My dad, a very avid player, and he'd tell me these stories. So I had this image of this guy who kind of lived in a cave, <laughs> you know, this old leather bag with the kind of weird golf clubs. And so I was just always very curious about him. And uh, through uh, through Mark Evershed, a Canadian golf pro, I got to meet Mo and uh, got to play with him. And I finally got to learn more and more about him. And yeah, sure, he was, he was regarded as the best ball striker who ever lived, but perhaps the greatest character in golf ever. Why do you, why do you think Canadians, because uh, I got this question a lot, how did Canadians view Mo? And I know you have your, the way you saw him, and you wrote the biography, Mo's biography, but how did most Canadians see Mo Norman, especially in his well in his early years, and then then in his later years, which is always interesting. I always was fascinated about how Canadians viewed who I consider an icon. Right. It depends on the, on on the history. When Mo was an amateur, he's only you know 20, 30 years old. A lot of the people in golf, and we're talking here like the late 50s and early 60s, uh, golf was still pretty much a blue blood sport. They didn't understand Mo. He was a different cat from a side from the other side of the tracks. He'd wear clothes that just didn't kind of match. He had, you know, bad teeth. So people in that golf establishment didn't understand him and they didn't like him at all. And then as he got older into golf, um, people started to appreciate him a little bit more, particularly the players that would play with him. He played on the Canadian tour and he dominated the Canadian tour. But, and, but media types, he didn't trust them. A lot of other people who he'd meet. He kind of fueled the, he kind of fueled the, um the fire a little bit when it came to trying to get to know him, I guess, in Canada, because if, if he was ignoring media types, you know, the, the question that people always ask is, if he was so great, you know, why didn't he play on the PGA Tour? That's a question I get quite often. Right. And, I, you know, my answer is always, well, he did play on the PGA Tour. He played 11 events or 12 events, and he um, and he actually, actually did pretty well in those events, but he. The PGA Tour wasn't what it is today. You know, it wasn't that place where you could go make a ton of money. Right. Half the guys on the PGA Tour at the time were back home teaching on the weekends when they didn't make a cut or they weren't playing. So it's the people want to think they want to equate today's quality of golf on the tour, that lifestyle, to back in the 50s and 60s when Mo was playing. And I just you can't look at it. It's not an apples to apples comparison. 
And there's no way I could see Mo, you know, wanting to live that lifestyle. There wasn't a lot of money out there. There, he didn't want to be away from home. He wanted to be around his comfort zone, around his friends and his yeah. and the people he was comfortable with, because that's the way he was, you mm -hmm. know. But based on his skill, guys like Ken Venturi, Bob Golby said that Mo could contend, and he in uh, New Orleans, he yeah. he uh, he was contending there. Uh, but in New Orleans, and this is where this is where it came to a head and Mo left the tour, was that he just didn't fit in socially. At that time, in the um, 19, late 1950s, the, the pros were trying to move away from kind of like this, this gambler type of um, image, so they wanted guys to be more professional. So what happened was some guys um, cornered Mo in the locker room, said, Mo, you gotta take a caddy, stop fooling around, stop using the high tees, and all this kind of thing. And well, they humiliated him. And that's how, well, that's how he felt. And he left the tour, and people always said, you know, even when he was old enough to play in the Champions Tour, that Mo would have done very really well, well there. But he didn't fit in socially. Yeah, and, and when I talked to Mo about that, he would say things that he thought it was all about entertainment, having fun, entertaining the crowd. That's the way he looked at golf. Um, and I think that's what people don't understand about that was the tour back then, the way Mo saw it. He was out there to have fun, out there doing what he liked to do. And Mo, Mo would say to me many times that if uh, I wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it, not the way other people want, and if he couldn't do it the way he wanted to do it, it wasn't fun for him. Right. You know? And then he, and, and so there was a lot of things like that for Mo. So I think that's what's interesting about you know the whole Mo Norman story is that there's no doubt in my mind that anybody who ever saw Mo perform, and you know I met Mo when he was 64 years old, but anybody who saw Mo perform, hit a golf ball saw it in person would say that it's one of the purest things you've ever seen. It, it, it's, it, it's hard to explain how good it was. The sound of the golf ball, the, the consistency of the flight of the ball. Um, but I mean, that's what I think that we were so, what I was so impressed by when I first met Mo far before, long before I actually knew him as a person, um, just watching him perform. It was an amazing thing to see. Yeah, and, and couple that with being such an, an amazing character. Because the things about Mo is that the, the stories of Mo and thousands of stories are told about Mo all the time. You get a bunch of golf pros together, and because um, he was a different, he was a different guy. He socially, he was, he just he was kind of impaired socially. So you combine that skill that he had, this otherworldly skill to hit the ball exactly where he was looking every time. I mean, it wowed the pros, and that's why he's so loved. That's why he's such a legend and icon. Is because he was just such this. If you got to know Mo on the on the right side of him, people loved him. A lot of people didn't understand that he would make them go away because he was afraid of people. But you talk to like old PGA Tour pros, guys like Nick Price, um, those those guys. Like part of the ritual of the Canadian Open on the PGA Tour, every Tuesday, Mo would come out on the range. And they'd invite him out in street shoes, yeah. and he hit balls, and all the pros on the tour would be around him, and they'd be watching, and they'd all just be in awe of this yeah. guy. He could just paint the sky. Whatever he wanted to do, he could do. Yeah, that's what I saw. Amazing. Absolutely.